Welcome back to the channel. Another episode in the routing slip series. This time we're going to cover how we get data into activities through the arguments and how we unit test those activities. So first I'm going to start off, if we remember in the demo, we have a consumer that builds the routing slip. And I'm going to take each of these activities one at a time. So let's start with the license verification activity. The license verification activity has three arguments. It wants the participant license number, which is a string, and it wants an event type and a category, which it really doesn't use for anything, but hey, data is data. It's all awesome. Now, how the activity uses that data is it looks at the participant license number, it verifies it, which we know it isn't really doing anything other than checking for this one special case, and then adding a variable to the routing slip with the expiration date of that license. And we're just making it up for 90 days from now. That's all that activity is doing. But to do that, it needs that license number. And in the log, we write those other details just so we show that they get there. But how does that consumer put those into the routing slip? So if you remember, we created our routing slip builder at the top. And in this case, I'm using builder.set variables to add these three variables into the routing slip, the participant email address, license number, and category. And the reason I might want to add these as variables is because I could have multiple activities that use those values, and I don't want to duplicate them. They're kind of like just shared information that's available to any activity on the routing slip. And they're by name and by type. So I'm just going to add those in as variables. And then as I go in to add the activity, I'm going to add the specific elements that are only used by that activity. In this case, I'm going to add category, even though I'm not using it. So I will take that out because the arguments only look at participant category, license number, and event type. So I really only need to specify the event type of road as one of the parameters. And I'm only doing that because I have to. So now when I run that activity, it will pull from the variables, the license number and category, and then the event type from the road. So the other activity after that is the event registration activity. And its arguments take those three same values, email address, license number, and category, they also take that participant license expiration date, which if we remember from our license verification activity, is added as a new variable by that activity. It then generates the, where did it go? Event registration activity. It then comes up with some registration amount, logs that we've registered for the event, adds a registration ID to the routing slip variables, and also adds an amount, which is that registration total. So again, two new variables added by this activity, registration ID and amount. And on input, it takes that license expiration date. And when we run the unit test that we're going to get to in a minute, we'll be able to see how that all that stuff comes out in the log. The other P activity that's added by the consumer that's building the routing slip is this process payment activity. Process payment activity arguments, not using a whole lot of them, but whatever. Uh, but we definitely want the card number and we want the amount. Now the amount by name as a decimal is going to come from the registration activity. It's gonna tell us how much we need to charge based on the registration. Um, say it's dynamic, it's something that could come up. You know, we have to calculate the amount. Uh, you know, if, they're a, if they have a license, it's more expensive. If they don't have a license, ooh, I like that. We'll put that in. That's a good idea. Let's do that. Let's do that real quick. So let's make our event registration activity say, hey, if you have a license number, the amount is, let's just make this a decimal now. We're not going to make this a constant. We'll say the default registration is 25 bucks. And if you have a license, it's only $15. That way you get like a little discount. So we'll make it a little cheaper if you have a license. Uh, and then, so when we add the activity to process payment, 
we're adding that payment info, which came from the payment info service, which the payment info service is a secure payment info. It has all of the card number details that came out of that other system. And we're gonna add those arguments for this specific activity only. The amount will come from the variables in the routing slip. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cover how to unit test these. So I've kind of covered how our arguments work. Log items work the same way. It's just log items for compensation are added by that activity itself. So they aren't in the variables, but if they want to pull from variables, they can as well. And I'll show that at some point. Um, so let's kind of dig in a little further here and see how we can show those values. So I've added a unit test project to the solution and I've created a couple of unit tests. Now this is using the mass transit test harness so it's all in memory. None of the saga or transport stuff is used so no EF, no database. And in this particular test I'm only testing to see if the saga produced the event. So when a registration received is published by that initial registration consumer the saga should produce that process registration event. So if I run that, I can go out and I can look at the unit test output and I can see all this in memory stuff. I configured the state machine. I'm just doing a simple publish of the registration received. The saga is receiving it and doing process registration. So I know my saga works super simple. Let's look at the unit test of what happens when we complete a routing slip start to finish. So we can see all the bus setup, process registration, submit registration, registrate, all those endpoints are created. We send our initial message. We can see where the activity license verification execute is executing. It's verifying that license number that's in my unit test, 2112. It's then sending the routing slip to the next activity. The next activity is running event registration. It's registering for the event, one, two, three. We're dumping out that participant detail, license number 2112. The expiration date is 90 days from now. I'm a cat six. We registered for that event. Now we are going into the process payment step. We're processing that payment for $25. We're creating the send transport. We're producing that registration state event back that says the routing slip completed. Everything is great. All the process payment was completed. We're sending those events back. Everything was good, great, bland, glorious. There's also a test in here that checks the registration status to make sure that the registration state is there. Let's see what that test looks like. So the routing slip tests, I created a common service collection setup for this because I have two tests in the same project. All I'm doing is I'm adding consumers, activities, and state machines, that's it. I'm not doing any special configuration. All the default Saga repositories and everything are all set up. All the activity endpoints are set up. And for the test to verify that it completes, I'm starting the harness. I'm creating a submission ID. I'm publishing that registration received event, which is happens when the API controller gets a submission and then produces it out. I'm plugging that data in. And I'm waiting for that consumed registration completed message to be handled. And that is what's actually consumed by the Saga when the registration is complete. And then to confirm the status, I'm actually creating a request client with get re registration status. And I'm actually asking via the request response client, the same way the controller does, for the status of that registration and verifying that the status is equal to registered and that the registration ID, which is one of those properties in the state machine, actually has a value. Now that's an important thing to think about. Let's go back to that. So the registration ID is in the saga. Where does this get set? This is set when, here's the saga property. It's set when the registered, the registration completed event is consumed by that saga. So you can see I write out that registered and I write out the submission ID, the participant email address. I'm also capturing the variables out of the routing slip from that event into 
my saga because this is some information I want to keep track of. Maybe I find it interesting, maybe I have to use it later, but this is a super common use case is I want to be able to get data out of the routing slip that completed and I use the events that I've subscribed to to get that information. In this case, I'm getting a date time of participant license expiration date because I want that date. I want to store that around. Maybe I want to keep that because if the event gets delayed and the license expires, maybe they have to renew. You know, I could make up scenarios all day long on this kind of stuff. Um, the registration ID, if we remember, that was actually by the event registration activity and it's used to keep the actual value that was registered, say it was returned by the registration database or whatever, doesn't matter what it is. Um, yeah, super exciting there. I'm gonna jump back over here. And so that's just calling context. Context is the behavior context of the event being processed by the state machine. So I've talked about this in the uh, various messaging uh, state machine type videos that I've done about how to use behavior context and produce messages and stuff like that. I create these extension methods because I feel like it keeps the state machine really clean. You know, when event registration completed, registered. Yes, I realize I haven't gone over the state machine yet, but anyway, this is just kind of showing that. I'll cover the state machine in another episode a little better. Um, but I'm capturing this and I'm using those state machine events, such as the registration completed event, to pull those variables and get that information out. And that's the subscription that was added by that consumer. So get variable against that behavior context, is gonna pull in that date time and process that. And if it doesn't come back, it's null. These are both nullable fields. So if there isn't a value there, it'll return that default. So that's how we get data into and out of activities. And also how we can unit test those activities by creating a routing slip and processing it. So another kind of deep dive on this, Gonna have more to come, you know, specific areas. I've got a list of videos to produce and I'm gonna roll them out every couple days. You know, it's it's the holidays, people are, you know, kind of wanting to have something to do. So I think it's super fun to just kind of dig through and learn a new skill. And for me, it's just a great time to go through it and see where I need to like update the docs and clean things up. But uh catch us on the next one. We'll cover more. Thanks for joining. See you next time.